Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's your friendly neighborhood farmer Raznak and today we're going to be talking about a great a new mod for PC only. Yep, sorry consolers. Uh, if you're watching this, just turn it off now. Unless you want to sit there jealous with envy and the greatness that is uh, PC gaming. No, this is FS22 Enhanced Vehicle. This is the Enhanced Vehicle mod for Farming Simulator 22. This is a mod I used a lot, a lot with the capital A in Farming Simulator 19. It has some great little features that I'm going to show to you. It has some great little fixes for stuff that we need. Uh, if you're a GPS junkie like myself, then it kind of gives you a GPS light version um, so that you can have nice OCD free triggering lines in your field. Uh, it also has some neat little features to help with grip and traction and other things. So let's just jump right into it, right? Why diddle? Let's do this. So where can you get this mod, right? Where can you get it, Raz? Where's it at? Well, you can get it over at GitHub. In fact, I'll put a link down in the description for you. This mod is by Zool. I'm afraid Zool. Should we go looking for the key master and the gatekeeper? I am the key master. I am the gatekeeper. Yes, you heard me correctly. Zool. Zool is the maker of FS22 Enhanced Vehicle. So I'll show you how to do that. Just real quick, uh, you go over here to github.com, Zool FS22 Enhanced Vehicle. And you can see this was updated three days ago. This is a work in progress. This is not a full release. This is a work in progress. So again, like all things that are work in progress, it's beta. So this mod is a pretty much a basic snap driving direction and does some other features we'll show off. Gives you a little description and all that good stuff. So if you want to download it, what you're going to do is you're going to go to code right here and you're going to hit download zip. And then what that's going to do is down here, we'll go to show to folder and I'll show you this. It's going to show you this enhance vehicle main. You're going to extract all and you're going to hit extract. And then voila, it's going to take you to this extracted file. Now, when you open this up, you're going to be like, but Raz, there's all this stuff. This is if you are an editor or know stuff about code, or if you want to help build the mod, I, I have no idea how to do this. But what we want is this little golden goose laying egg, or egg laying golden goose. You, you get me. It's this one right here, FS22 Enhanced Vehicle. This mod right here, you're going to want to copy. And then what you want to do is go to your documents, my games, or I mean simulator 22 mods, and you're going to paste it, right click, hit paste, boop, and you're gonna put it right here. I already have it here, so we don't need it. But that's all you're gonna do. That's the easy way to get it. All right, let's look back at our menu. Now that we're in this, let me show you some neat little features. If you look down here in the bottom right hand corner, you're gonna see a different HUD display. Things are a little different. You're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see uh, where it says Cedar Additional Tank Tractor. That is your wear, uh, your wear meter. Uh, instead of the actual graph, you actually have a, a a numbered percentage that's going to show you there. Right next to it, where you see the little green and the bright green, that is your current course or direction or angle, or whatever you want it. That's pretty much on the compass, which direction you're facing. So we are at 90 degrees, right there, 90 degrees, and that changes. Next to that, you're gonna see a fuel consumption. That fuel consumption goes up or down based upon your RPMs, your RPMs, and it also shows you your fuel gauge. So if you don't, it kind of gives you a real-time fuel usage. And then around where it says zero miles per hour, you actually see a tachometer or RPM gauge. I think that's what it's called. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing half the time. Now the game actually has one, so you can kind of see how when we get moving our, you know, RPMs jump up. But if you look in the bottom left, there's a little number dial that jumps up and down for RPMs. 
And there's also a temperature gauge. What the temperature is, I think, is our engine temp. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it does something. And then in the far right-hand corner, right next to the gears that we're in, you're going to see a little display. And in that display, you have uh, a front, a rear, and then a center icon. You see the two greens and the yellow. You can turn those on and off by using the controls. Now, what are the controls, you say? Well, let me show you what the controls are. No, not that, Raz. Not that, Raz. Yeah, back here, this is what we want. So we're gonna go down here to these controls. You can see there's all these different controls that, that do things, right? You can reference this yourself. I'm not gonna go over each one of these controls, but I am gonna show you what they do in the game. So let's go back here. Now, what you can do is if you hit control seven or eight, you're gonna hear this clicking sound. And that is enabling or disabling your differential lock. Now, it's confusing. Green means that your differential lock is off. When it turns red, it means your differential lock is on. That's what that means. It's, I know it's confusing. Green means it's off. Red means that it's actually on. Now, also there in the middle, you see this little, you know, drivetrain right there that changes yellow and clear. I'm showing you that. I've got it all zoomed in for you. That turns your four-wheel drive mode on or off. Four-wheel drive on or four-wheel drive off. I'm pretty sure that's the way it is. I, I, you'll have to play with it and you'll definitely tell because I'll show you a really neat little trick here in just a minute. So we're going to turn that on or off. It, you know, for a lot of times it's not going to matter, but there's going to be times where it actually matters. All right, let's zoom back out and I'm going to show you the best feature of the entire deal. So we're going to line up right here on the field edge. We have our nice little lemkin unloaded here, right? And you're like, oh man, I got to drive this by hand. I'm not going to be able to do it. Well, let me show you what you do. So what you want to do, you want to get a 90 degree angle because this is 90 degrees. So you see our little green thing down there at the bottom. You want that to be as close to 90 degrees as you, hit, you can. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hit shift and the number key end. And now you can see, oh, I did it wrong. Shift end. Shift N? No, it's Control N. Yeah, sorry. Completely wrong, screwed up. It's going to be Control N. Control and the N key. Now, if you look, it says 91 degrees locked into the red. Well, we want to change that. We want a perfect 90 degree. So you're going to grab your Shift button and you're going to hit page up or down and you can change the degrees. You see that change in there in the red? Yes, so we want it right at 90 degrees. There is our locked in when it's red, it's locked. You can actually hear an audible sound when it locks. Control N, lock it in. Shift up or down to set our angle the way we want. Let's lower our implement, turn it on, hit cruise control, and now we're planning. And I'm not doing anything. I'm not touching anything. I'm not even looking at the wheel and it keeps it perfect. 90 degree angle. That's right. Sing your praises to Zul, the, I don't know, Zul, the Sumerian god of Zul that is now a modder in Farm Sim. So thank you, Zul, for this wonderful GPS-like attachment. Now, it has a few other little features. So it, it, it does some different stuff. So we've planted our one line, look, nice and pretty. I don't know why that's acting kind of weird, but it is. I think it's because this field is kind of like partially fertilized and partially, it don't matter. But long story short, say we get to the end of our row. When you just turn the steering wheel, it automatically unlocks. As soon as you touch the steering wheel, it unlocks. But what else we can do is let's lock in our course here. Again, page up or page down. We have it on 90. Let's just back up. And then you can do a 180 by hitting control home. And automatically, 
it does a 180 degree turn. Now it always turns to the left. I can't get it to turn to the right. It always turns to the left. Now if we were planning this other field, just like that, it automatically turns to the left. So say we get down here to the end of the field and we want it to, we hit control home, boop, and it does an automatic turn. And there we are right there. So it always turns to the left. So you want to start on the right edge of the field. That's again, like I said, this is, this is a GPS light thing. So Raz, what about fields that don't have a straight line? Well, that's all right. Just get a course, say this is an angle and you hit your control home, you lock in your course and voila. It does, it does what it's supposed to. It, it does. It's magic. Hang on to me. You know, sorry, get your course and then, you know, your control and your end key and it locks it in. Lower your implement and take off. And then say your course needs to be adjusted a little. Well, just kind of turn it a little. Doing your little page up and down. You can actually use this to do nice curves using nothing but control or shift and then page up and down. You can do some really neat stuff with it just like that look and i didn't do that with my keyboard or my steering wheel or anything i used that using the different the the course lock it's a very neat little feature you just again line up what course you want we want it straight at 270 we hit control end we hear our little lock sound and we're free to go and it just does its thing the other functions are you can change angles by 90 degrees, you can change angles by single degrees. You could do all kinds of stuff, but it's it's kind of neat. Now, some of you are asking, but Raz, wait, I, how do I know how do I know the width of my implement? Right? It's kind of really hard to see what I'm doing. How do I know the width of my implement? Well, you just wait, little birds, because I'm gonna feed you right here. You ready? This is it. You hit Shift and then Home, and wouldn't you know? You actually have visual lines that show you the width of your working implement. Now, Raz, how do we know that works? Well, let's finish this line. Like I said, we're going to get to the end here and we're going to do a 180 to the left. So we're going to hit control home. What it's going to do. We're going to do a 180 to the left. And just like that. You've started a new planning at, with a 180 degree turn. Now I don't use the auto turn. So what I do is I have this on and you can use these little red lines to line up your next row. Like, oh, that looks like it's pretty straight. Hit my, hit my, uh, control end, lock my course in. I don't want 91. I want 90 degrees, right? So we do shift page down, lower our implement, and away we go. And now it's locked in. And you can leave these red lines up if you want to see the red lines. They kind of bounce around a little bit. Now, you don't have to do anything to adjust the width of these. So let's turn this off. Let's drop that. And now you can see the red lines disappeared, right? Our red lines are gone because we have no implement attached. But wait. I have something right here. So let's go over and grab this. And you can see that it, we have our implement showing lines. We grab it and poof, it shows you how wide your implement is so that you can line up those courses. Now let's jump away. I'm going to show you one more neat little feature. If you're already not like, this is freaking awesome. Like I am because until we have a GPS, this is kind of the only thing we have for people like me who I, I really I, I don't like to drive my vehicles. I like to use the auto navigation. Excuse me, I spent four hundred thousand dollars on a harvester. I want it to drive itself. But there's also a problem in the game with trucks. And I'm going to show you that this kind of fixes that problem for us. All right. So one of the main problems with this game is the trucks are wimpy. The trucks have no traction, very little grab. 
uh, you get a full truck. So like this one is full. It's full with 40. I mean, it's full of corn, right? Just like you would in real life. You go in, you fill your truck full of corn. We got this nice big scream in America with all of its power Mac anthem. And you cannot get it to pull up this hill. Now, with our neat little feature, we can go ahead and enable four wheels because why not? I know it's not realistic, but this fixes. So we have that on and we turn our differential lock on. And now look, it's not perfect, but now we got some grab and I'm going to show you how that works. So we're going to turn all this off and then look. Look, you only have the rear, see, we have the one rear wheel spinning. That's it. And then if we turn on four wheels, look, now we got all four wheels are spinning. Just like that, but we're still not getting grabbed. So let's turn our diff lock, differential lock on. And now, well, we still don't have the best grab in the world, but it starts moving. So it really helps with that traction problem on hills that trucks in the game have. Now, I hopefully that gets patched soon, but that is a problem. So you're, it doesn't give you four wheel drive in the front. It makes all four rear wheels work because guess what? It, it did, you know, see, we're climbing this hill. If we turn, if we turn this stuff off. Like we just, it, now we're going downhill. But, you get the gist of it. Like, we'll stop moving here in a second. Maybe because we're rolling. Okay. See? Just spinning. So let's, let's lock that stuff in and boom. Now we're cooking. Except I hit a telephone pole. But you get the gist of it, right? You get the gist of it. It is a fix. It helps a lot with grip on the trucks. If anything, if that's all you use it for, it's definitely worth it. In 19, it actually had a shuttle control so that if you use a wheel and pedals, uh, you can actually shift. But now that we have manual shifting, I don't think we really need a shuttle control. But you can see there's a lot of neat little fixes that this this offers. That this it, it really, really helps with a lot of problems in the game. So you can use it to help your trucks pull better until that gets fixed. And also to help... Uh, kind of like a GPS light version uh, until we get something more in depth and more more uh, until we actually get a GPS mod you can use this one as a substitute until then uh, it has one glaring problem it's not a mod problem it's a problem with farming simulator if you don't know yet if you run script mods for farming simulator 22 when you ex save and exit a game it's a high likelihood that you're going to crash to desktop it doesn't matter if you use this enhanced vehicle it doesn't matter if you use place anywhere it doesn't matter it causes at least for me and for a lot of people that i've read on the forums the use of any script mod causes the game to crash when exiting a game doesn't cause any crash problems during but it crashes on exit that, again hopefully that gets patched soon with giants if you like the enhanced vehicle mod uh let me know let me know in the comments if you have any questions the link to the mod is down in the description if you have need any help getting installed anything like that you can just let me know and i hope you enjoyed today's video thank you so very much for watching if you're watching this i am streaming live on thursday this is thursday if you're watching this on thursday i will be live tonight at 9 p.m i'll be live streaming tonight at 9 p.m if i'd love to see you there if not we'll talk to you next time in one of the videos all right everybody take care thanks for watching see you later Bye bye